So historically, I mean, are we, are we talking about one of the all-time great staffs here, do you think? Well, I, I think you're talking about it's a nice start, right? And, you know, Frank and I, we were discussing this earlier. It's, they're uncomfortable. That's what they are. As a, as a hitter, look, it's way too early to say they're an all-time great staff. And, and you want to compare them to, to maybe some of those staffs of the Braves in the mid-90s. Mm -hmm. But the difference is when you're looking at this Houston staff, especially as a right-handed hitter, you know, you're trying to find out, like, where am I going to get my hits? What game am I going to be able to, you know, do okay? <laughs> There's nothing comfortable there. I mean, the, the most comfortable at bat for one of those right-handed pitchers is probably against McCullers, and that's a nasty curveball and a 93, 94 mile an hour fastball. Like, there's nothing fun about playing those guys at all. It's amazing, Frank. I mean, I'm just thinking about yesterday when Verlander said he's a little off and his ERA went to 1.08, and then Morton was, you know, he still has other weapons. He got a lot of ground ball to get through. He's a little off and he's 7 0 right now. Yeah. But the bottom line, like he said, that's an uncomfortable staff to face. These guys are power pitchers, they strike you out. It's not like they give you a comfortable. 0 for 3. I mean, you're up there fighting for your life on every pitch with these guys because that's how vicious their repertoire pitches are. So I can see a lot of guys on the weekend. Oh, we got Verlander, uh, Cole, Cole, and Morton. Morton. Uh, my hamstring's a little sore. But you, you, your hamstring my has to be sore not, for four no. or five days. <laughs> you can't go like, I just got one. I mean, that, my hamstring's a little sore. Well, we're we're serious. Well, it's that's like, rough. You know, when you go back to that Atlanta staff, and now that, that was, that's a Hall of Fame staff, right? You've got Smoltz, Smoltz and Maddox and Glavin. But with, with Glavin and with, with Maddox, I mean, they're, they're not intimidating, right? They're going to get you out, but you didn't feel like, oh, man. And Smoltz was going to throw, you know, fastballs and sliders away every single time. So it wasn't anything where you just went, you may not have had success, but it wasn't, oh, man, I just don't know what I'm going to do up here. I'm going to be battling. i got to be loose on my feet. These guys, Verlander and Nicole, Morton, and, and you know, McCullough, for three. like, well, not these guys. Not, not these those guys. guys. These, those guys, guys. You're just yeah. like, God. You're trying to make contact here. Well, you can't. And, you, and it's like Frank said, you know, you might go with like, oh, my hamstring's a little sore. I was, you know, whatever. <laughs> but you're going to have to do that for four days, right? That's just not happening. Just go. And then you face lungs. Dallas Keuchel on the fifth day. Right. Like, then you're facing Cy Young right. Award winner on not the fifth bad. day. Like, but uh, just man. to put it in perspective right now, we showed you the ERA. So they've got the best ERA. They've got the best strike ERA. And they also have the top three ground ball producers as starters right. in the league. That's pretty good. That's what the Astros are mm. doing right now. Historic stuff with their starting rotation. We're talking what's coming this weekend for the Red Sox, and that's the return of Dustin Bedroya. So how are the Red Sox going to handle getting Petey back in the lineup? A couple things, Kevin. First and foremost, of course, Pedroia plays every day at second base, which means that the Red Sox bench gets better. Eduardo Nunez goes more into that super utility role in which he has excelled for so long in the major leagues. And the roster move to get Pedroia on the roster likely to be a trade or designation for assignment of former top prospect Blake Swihart. Swihart's had only a bit of a part-time role this year for the Red Sox, hitting below 200, probably time for him to move on. Maybe the White Sox a spot for him with the Castillo suspension. So again, Swihart likely moving out in Pedroia, who was mentored by Alex Cora as a young major leaguer. Now he's going to play for Alex Cora in Boston. Mm. JP, appreciate it. We'll see you a little bit later in the show, so hang in. Uh, so great. Pedroia coming back this weekend. Uh, EK, he's obviously going to play, right? I'm just yep. curious how a core is going to work him in and how this all fits in the Red Sox uh, rotation here. So it, just his production, basically his health is going to dictate how often he's in there, right? So if he's, if he's okay, they're going to just run him out there. And the, and the luxury he has is he's just going to slide in, and the only thing he has to worry about is Dustin Pedroia. He doesn't have to come back and rescue a team. I mean, Boston is, I mean, look at the way they're playing extremely well. You look at what the Dodgers had to do with Justin Turner or what they hoped it, you know, Justin Turner is going to come back and save everything, right? And Dustin Pedroia has the luxury of, look at, just go at your own, go at your own speed, get healthy. We're in it for the long haul. And Pedroia, you know, he's the ultimate pro. He fits in any lineup. He plays hard. He plays the game right every day. I love to watch him play. He's one of my favorites over the last decade also. Yeah. Uh, so it's not going to be a mismatch getting back in that lineup because they need him. He's a veteran. They're going to need his presence in the lineup. He's been there, and he's done that. Knee surgery seven months ago. And I think, I think they're actually better with Nunez. I think Nunez is better when he's sure. bounced around filming mm -hmm. it, don't you? You know, kind of well, put him lot, here one day, right. here another day. I mean, it makes Cora's job now. I, I'm not going to say it becomes easier, 
but it allows him to do a lot of different things. Yeah, he can mix and match a little bit. So it'll be great to see Pedroia back out on the field. That will be very cool. Let's welcome in our insider, J.P. Morosi, who's back. J.P. Manny Machado. That's what we're talking about here. We know he's a free agent at the end of the year, but forget that. Where is he going at the trade deadline? Of course, Kevin, only two players in the major leagues with a better OPS than Manny right now. Uh, Betts and Trout are their names. He's been pretty good this year, as he usually is. Uh, the two teams to watch for Machado, I believe, the Cubs and the Indians. Now, the Cubs, interestingly, Theo Epstein today on 670 The Score Radio in Chicago was asked about this possibility. He said it was something that is, quote, unquote, in fantasy land at this point. So, again, trying to tamp down that speculation. But with the Indians, Kevin, interestingly, because Manny can play multiple positions on the infield, you could put Machado at third, move Jose Ramirez to second base because uh, Jason Kipnis, of course, has been struggling so much over there. So, again, stay tuned to that Cleveland possibility. Of course, Machado's brother-in-law, Yonder Alonso, plays first base on that team. And speaking of Ohio, one last note on the Eugenio Suarez uh, fact that he's tied for the NL lead in RBI. He missed 17 games this year with a broken thumb. He's still tied for the NL lead in RBI. Rem remarkable year there for Suarez. And again, here as we near midnight, I'm going to have some of the same coffee that Frank had earlier today <laughs> because I actually haven't flown out from the studio to my house here in Michigan. So uh, it's never too late in the night to have some of that great studio coffee there on the Fox lot. You know, you know what I love about JP? Even when he's not here, he's watching the show. Yes. He's paying attention to the show. JP, we love you. Great stuff tonight. We'll send the coffee via FedEx. My pleasure, guys. Thank you. I, I can't wait. Uh, JP, he's the best. Yes, he is. So, Manny Machado, so we were banning about before, you know, kind of saying, oh, the Nationals, because it wouldn't make sense, but it'll, it'll never happen because those two teams just hate each other. So give me a realistic uh, of where you think he could go, other than what JP said. He said Cubs, Indians. What do you think? I'd go Atlanta Braves. Oh. If Atlanta is still around, and they're still playing well make all the sense in the world because again there's no National League team that stands out this may be the Braves window if they are there this year you get Machado you add him to this lineup I mean why can't they win the National League and then you get into the World Series and you take your chances against one of those big three Red Sox Yankees or Astros now it's as good a time as any Frank but if you're gonna waste prospects you better be able to sign this guy and the best destination for me is Chicago White Sox a lot of prospects to, for a major trade. A lot of money's been saved. They're ready to go to the next level. He's a perfect fit in Chicago because they got some great pieces around him that will make, make him better, and, and he can help lead this ball club. So you're saying trade him and sign him to a long-term deal right then and there? No doubt about it. He it's has the only to want to sign, though, doesn't he? Well, <laughs> show right. me the money. You know give what? me the pen. Sign where the money is. <laughs> Couple hundred million, give me the pen. <laughs>